Hey everybody, it's John Johnston. Corn Nation and spring football is just around the corner. That requires me to do a story by law. It requires me to do a story about the five storylines of spring football. This is one of your standard stories we do every year because we know you need the content. So going into spring practice, and I'm thinking about the spring game actually a lot because it would be fun to get together for it and feel joy for once about Nebraska football with other people in person who have joy about Nebraska football. But hey, let's go on to our storylines. Will we tackle it the spring game? Okay, maybe that's not really a storyline, but I mean, it's just kind of a question. I'm just assuming that you're going to play tackle football at the spring game because if you don't, it would be a warning sign. Just saying that things might not be what they seem. Just bringing that up, just to throw it out there, and now we're going to throw it away. So on to the storylines. The offense, number one, the offense, or number four, the offense, number five, the offense. Well, it's a number, but the offense, what's it going to really look like? How much of it can they really put together in one spring? I mean, they have gobs of players, and how much can they install in one spring, and how much are we going to actually see? Will there actually be a fullback, or was that all just words of love and kind of gooeyness? being thrown at the Nebraska fan base. Next, the lines. And really, I think this is the biggest story. What's going to happen with our offensive and defensive lines? Are we going to actually have an offensive line? Who's going to be on the offensive line? What positions are they going to play? That's the biggest key for me this entire spring. I am required by aforementioned law to put other things in this video for storylines. But the lines are really, I think, what it comes down to for me. That's it. Who's going to be our tackles? Who's going to play a tackle? Is our new offense, is our new coaching staff going to be able to build offensive lines out of the guys that we have? Even though we, I know we picked up some portal transfers in here, but we really need to make the guys we have work better than they have previously because previously they were god-awful. And I think everybody knows that, including them. Are they going to get better? How much better? Defensive line, same thing. Nebraska had a problem of kind of being run over a lot in the Big Ten in the past few years, and that's not something we should allow to let happen in the future if we want to win a lot of games, and I'd like to see us win a lot of games. So, therefore, who's going to be on the defensive line? What positions are they going to play? How good are they going to be? I realize we won't find out a lot of this until fall, but... I think those two things, the offensive, defensive lines, those are the biggest storylines of spring, really the keys. And because it's spring football, you have to talk about quarterbacks. If you have two quarterbacks on your roster, you are obligated to talk about quarterback battles because, I don't know, there's like laws. Nebraska has six, I think it is, scholarship quarterbacks. That's a lot of scholarship quarterbacks. We have a gob of quarterbacks. We have quarterbacks you haven't even thought of because all you're being thinking about is Casey Thompson and Jess Sims. And we have never even really seen, we've never seen Richard Torres play. Nobody, had, I haven't seen anybody mention him. You know, Logan Smothers, nobody mentions that guy. Heinrich Harburg, nobody mentions that guy. Chubba Purdy disappeared from the public mind. All of those guys are on the roster. Are they all going to stick around? Are they all going to get time? Or are they all going to be part of the process? And keep in mind, a lot of this stuff is about, it's not necessarily about are they going to get on the field, are they going to be the starter, because that's everybody's thing about the quarterback, but are they going to contribute to the team? And that means that these guys are going to take up a place even on the scout team so they can help the team prepare for the next week's opponent next year. Are they going to be, well, are they still going to be on the roster? And that really leads us, I think, to the, the second number one storyline thing which is who will survive it's kind of like survivor i don't watch those reality tv shows where they vote people off an island because i don't know why people do but you know nebraska has like a hundred scholarship players and we all know that that's too many because the limit is 85 by fall practice so 15 scholarship players have to leave or be not have a scholarship or quit football they have to do something and then there's gobs of people who are on the roster as walk-ons and 
they're going to have to go somewhere. So there's going to be a massive amount of attrition, I think is the word here. After spring football, what's going to happen? Who's going to still stick around? I mean, think about it. The guy, there, guys that returned, you know, Xavier Betts is back, right? Isaiah Garcia Castaneda returned to the team after entering the portal. Uh, Alante Brown. Are they going to still stick around after spring? Are they going to go right back in the portal? Is Betts going to stay playing football? And then extrapolate that to everybody else that you can think of on the football team. And that's a huge storyline bit. And I know people want to include like recruiting in their storyline of spring because of the Dylan Raiola thing. But let's be honest. And I want you to take this serious. Recruiting doesn't affect this year. It doesn't. You, you can talk all the way you want around it about how we'll look good for the program and everybody feel better. You'd feel better. I'd feel better if we got a nice recruiting class for 2024, not this season. So is recruiting a storyline of spring? I know that on March 25th or whatever, we're going to have a massive amounts of really decent recruits show up. That's a big storyline, but it's a big storyline by itself. It doesn't really affect the rest of this. I don't know about you. I'd like to see Nebraska win games in 2023. So the things that I'm trying to focus on are the things that make us better in 2023. Recruiting is really not one of them. It's fun. Interesting. But we have like those quarterbacks I mentioned. Dylan Royola has been mentioned 863 billion times in the last three weeks alone. Chubba Purdy, not so much. Richard Torres, not at all. I base this on Google search. So there's little numbers you can look up. The last issue I'll bring up, kind of a storyline thing, is the portal transfers that have come to Nebraska. Are they going to be, are they going to have an impact? Are they going to be any good? Are they going to, well, make an impact? I already said that, but you get the idea. Who are we going to hear about? Hopefully a lot of people, because that's how you do it when you're doing a coaching in spring. You mention a lot of names so that guys feel good about themselves. I would think that's how you do it anyway. We'll see how Matt Rule handles spring football. Those are my storylines of spring. I'd like to hear what your comments are. My name is John Johnston Coronation. Please subscribe to this channel. I know a lot of you might show up for like history videos that I'm starting to make and go, why is this guy constantly talking about Nebraska? Well, you know what? Show up for the Nebraska content and stick around for the history or show up for the history content and stick around for the other stuff. And uh, there you go. Please support us. Thank you. Go Big Red.